Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Car coming, Doc. What's that for? We need a car, so I'm gonna get me a car. Why don't you use your head for a change? We're motorists in distress. We can get help without a gun. Well, this is just in case we run into trouble. Look, we can't afford trouble. I'll put it back. Are you trying to tell me what to do? Just saying what Matt would say. Now, put the gun back in the car. Need any help? Sure could use some. Good enough? I got a tow chain in the trunk. I'll get it. Thanks, friend. That looks like a short pull ought to do it.
He's fastening the chain on the car. We could use some help, too, you know. Hmm? Why? We're lost. In fact, I think we've been lost ever since we turned off the main road two hours ago. Nonsense. Charlie's fishing lodge must be around here somewhere. Where? Well, I don't know. Of course, we might have passed the turnoff back there. Okay. I'll ask him. Good. I don't want to spend the night in the car. I want to be indoors somewhere. Any place that's nice and cozy will be fine. Over-civilized. That's your trouble. <laughs> Take it away! Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks a million. No, don't mention it. Say, uh, I wonder, would you happen to uh, be able to tell us how we can get to Charlie Devlin's place on Loon Lake? Devlin's? Yeah. <laughs> Never been there before, and we kind of got lost. I'll tell you what, suppose you follow me. That'd be best. Oh, well, if you're sure it wouldn't be too much trouble. Oh, not a bit. One good turn deserves another. Thanks. Nice guy. Is this uh, Devlin's Lodge? No, this is Tomahawk Lodge, my place. It's too late to go hunting for Devlin. We'll have something to eat, find a place for you two to sleep, and drop you off at Devlin's in the morning. Oh, I thought you... Oh, not another word. It's all settled. Bonnie! This is Miss, uh, Mrs. Wilson. Her husband's an invalid. Uh, I'm Dr. Randall, Mr. Wilson's physician, and uh, Clay here is his chauffeur. I'm Jerry North, and this is my wife, Pam. Hi. How do you do? I do hope it won't be too much trouble. It's all right, isn't it, Bonnie? Sure, Doc. Yeah, sure, Doc. Whatever you say, Doc. Here. Take this up to your boss. I'll get you some supper. May I help? No, it won't take long. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, fine. Been out hunting? Yeah, I tried for some quail. No luck, though. Say, you must be quite a shot, Doc. Hunting quail with a rifle and in a bad light at that. Hey, he wants you upstairs. If you'll excuse me, my patient. Why'd you bring them here? Because I think we can use that car, man. We got a car, and I'll do all the thinking, doctor. I pick up that paper in town. If the police have our car pegged. We couldn't drive 20 miles without being picked up. Well, maybe so. But why'd you bring the people here? I told you, for their car. Nobody's looking for it. Seems to be in good shape. We can use it for the getaway. Mm, what do we do with the man and his wife? I'll figure out something when the time comes. No, doctor. I'll think of something, and in my own good time. Understand? Sure, man, sure. You're the boss. Uh -huh. Don't forget it. Oh, Doc. Yeah, man? I uh, dropped a cigar, but pick it up. Well? Uh, that's, that's nice. I'd like you to keep this place real neat. as much of him as I can take. Let me see if I can't help with dinner. Yeah, good. What's the matter? Don't they need any help? Well, offhand, I'd say they're doing very well by themselves. Will you? you can sit down. I'll get some more plates. Are we going to wait for the others? No, Mr. Wilson's confined to his room. It's for Clay. I... Help 
help yourselves. I don't guarantee nothing. Cooking isn't one of my strong points. I'll say it ain't. Who asked you? Shut up and pass this stuff over here. I'll pass it. I'll bounce it right off your thick head. Listen, you. Now sit down, both of you. Since when did you start giving the orders around here? Now look, Clay, I told you to sit down. I'm not going to tell you again. Okay, Doc, okay, for now. Well, I, I think we'd better be running along. It's been awfully nice. Uh, goodbye. Now, wait a minute. Let him go. Uh, uh, goodbye. Thanks again. What did you say? Let him go. And I didn't say it. He did. What's the matter? Won't start. How oh, very unfortunate. from the distributor. The Rhoda. Why would anybody want a thing like that, huh? You should know. You're the one who took it. Me? I haven't got it. Come on, search me. Go ahead. Oh, Jerry! Jerry! Thank you! Looks like he's out cold, man. Let's see if we can't snap him out of it, huh? Kidding? She'll scratch my eyes out. I went to... You see what I mean? Buddy, Buddy, I'll take her out. Come on, Mrs. Ford. Don't give me any trouble. Come on, give me a hand with him. Where should we take him, Doc? I'll put him in my room. He'll be safe there. to throw that left dock in medical school? Come on, get him upstairs. Bonnie. Yeah, what do you want? Don't just stand there. Come here. You look sick. Maybe you ought to take some of your own medicine, huh? Get out. Sounds like a printing press. 
a small hand job. A printing press? Yeah. Oh, I give up. Hey, Jerry, look at this. It's a story about a jailbreak. King of counterfeiters still at large. Oh, what's that got to do? Did you say counterfeiters? Yes, people that hide out with printing presses, counterfeiters. Matthias Weber, he is the professor. He says he's considered a genius at engraving and printing. The police warn he's a very dangerous man. The car sounds like the one downstairs. Let me look at that. The picture on page two. What do you think? It could be. It's a face that'll be hard to forget. Well, it's not clay. It isn't the doctor, that's for certain. That leaves Mr. Wilson, the invisible invalid. Incidentally, Mrs. Wilson is hardly the conventional type. Oh. Well, she and Doc have more than a casual interest in each other. Did you notice that? <laughs> well, I guess we might as well wait and see what happens. Get ready to move fast. Watch your step. All right, back up there. All right, Clay. You stay out of this. You tired of living, Doc? Hold it. I'll blow your head off. All right, that's enough. Time up. All right, get over here. No. You should be upstairs, Matt, taking it easy. While you take over, Doc? I'm just talking as your physician. Well, my physician? A quack that couldn't even make the grade in a mail-order medical school, some doctor. He fixed your face for you, didn't he, Matt? Shut up. Go in the kitchen and get me some coffee. Tell me, uh, doctor, in your professional opinion, when can I get a look at what's underneath these bandages? Today, tomorrow, when? I told you, Matt, there's too much danger of infection. That operation wasn't performed under what you'd call ideal conditions. The surgery. All right, don't give me more of that mumbo jumbo. Bonnie! Yeah, Matt. Hurry up with the coffee. Right away, Matt. Now, why were you holding a gun on Clay? Well, he wanted to kill North. I had to stop him. Hmm. You, uh, you figure we can let him live? Well, I thought we could use him as a hostage. He's got plenty. Clay was right. We gotta get rid of him. Go the boss, man. Mm-hmm. That's right. But you seem to have trouble remembering it. It's dust too weak. Don't you know how I like it? You were yelling at me to hurry. I thought you... You thought. Now, when did you start thinking? Now, take that stuff out there and make it strong. Do you understand? Strong. The newspaper certainly made something out of nothing, Professor. Mm -hmm. Just what are you talking about, Professor? The king of counterfeiters, the genius. Oh, that's a laugh. Oh, shut up. You're really just another mug like your boy. Doc's the only one with any brains around here, and he's the one that's going to wind up with the jackpot. Jerry, be careful. I told you to shut up. Sit down, Clay. But sit down. Now I call the turns. I'm the head man around here. I got the game figured out before you or anybody else even starts playing. So you say. I say Doc wins it all. And if you're very lucky, you may even wind up with your old saddleback. He's stalling for time, Matt. Don't listen to him. Oh, changing your tune now, Doc? Why don't you take a look at his handiwork, Weber? Why don't you take a look at what's under those bandages? You got the answer to that, Matt. You don't want any infection. Bonnie watched me do the operation. You trust her, don't you? No, 
Not with you around. Get her in here, Clay. Come on, Matt wants you. Oh, you're not taking her word for it. She and Doc are close, too close. You just said so yourself. Go on, Matt, shut him up. You'd like to shut me up, wouldn't you, Doc? What's the matter, Weber? You afraid to see what's under those bandages? You afraid to find out you've been played for a sucker? Right there's where you stay, Doc. See how long you last before they pick you up. So long, man. Goodbye, Doctor. Clay, did you take care of their car, did you? Well, who's top dog now? Sure, I made some mistakes. But the mistakes I make aren't the fatal ones. Hey, you don't seem so talkative now. Well, it's just as well. That explosion will bring a lot of people and I gotta be going. Now, someday a good surgeon will fix up my face. Till then, I got nothing to worry about, because you two will be dead. You, you, you'll pay for this some way, somehow. Very amusing. Devlin's fishing line. Now, for a while there, I never thought we'd make it. <laughs> I still can't believe we're here. Well, onward and upward. <laughs> Pam, the fishing tackle, the fishing gear, where is it? Isn't it in there? No, I, I thought it was under the bags. What could have happened to the stuff? I know where it is. Where? In the garage in New York. You put it there so you'd be sure not to forget it. Oh. What are we going to do in a place like this for a whole weekend without our fishing tackle? I'm 
sure we'll think of something. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation. Thank you.